Welcome back, everybody. So let's play Dragon's Dogma. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is episode 5. And this is our pawn. Now, I'm hoping that this little bit of lag I'm seeing is not because of... Alright, I'm getting some funky lag here, and it's starting to make me angry. You okay now? You done you done fooling around? Was it because I had the inbox open? Yep, that's what it was. Alright. A ways back I told everyone to pick a number between one and I, I forget I think it was one and twenty, thirty, something like that. And whoever got the closest ended up winning something, but they didn't know what until I contacted them. It turns out that Maddie M. Cartle won. And because he won, he earned the right to become my pawn. And I had originally decided, originally, that I was going to make a pawn based off of that person's appearance or off of whatever they wanted. What I didn't expect was for Maddie to come up with this huge, long list of pawns. Here are the ideas he came up with, and every single one of them is amazing. Male fighter, Hirakazu, because that was the name of the warlord we used in Samurai Warriors 2 Empires, and for him, it was the first LP he ever saw. Male strider, Hanzo, one of your first playthroughs in ongoing Samurai Warrior LPs, and also one of his favorite characters. I like it. Female strider, Fio, from the Metal Slug games. Which is pretty awesome. Male mage, Kanetsugu, from Samurai Warriors, because he uses magic paper. Pretty good fit. A female mage, Aya, from Parasite Eve 2. Again, how can I argue with that? A male warrior named Katsuie, because he's my drinking buddy. Apparently, he could not come up with a female warrior, which is fine. <laughs> oh, he just came up with so many great things. And just the one that stuck out to me, that really stuck with me and made me want to do it, was a female fighter named Selvaria. Because she is an opponent I would not want to face on the battlefield. And having her as a loyal servant would apparently turn my thoughts around. <laughs> well, whatever the case may be, I eventually decided to go with Silvaria. I thought she would be a great choice. Her moniker is Valkyrie. And, I don't know, I think that's a pretty decent representation of her. She looks pretty close, right? Yeah, okay, I obviously fudged it a little bit, but considering what I had, I think I did pretty good. I mean, that's quite literally as busty as I can make her. I mean, let's be honest. Silvaria is a very busty woman, and a very thin woman, almost fragile in appearance. And let me tell you, it was not easy to find artwork of her that wasn't, well, porn. So she is essentially a Japanese pipe dream. A Japanese pipe dream with a giant lance that shoots blue energy. And I do not want to fuck with that. There is one thing I do want to change, though. According to the wiki, Silvaria is 175 centimeters tall. That puts her at 5'7", I think. 5'7", or 8. So about average height for... Actually, average height for a man. She's a very tall thing. So I just need to adjust that. I need to make her just slightly shorter. Okay, see now I have a choice between either being too short or slightly too tall. And given that, I think I'd rather be slightly too tall. Now I do not have the in the the um the uh height to weight ratio chart uh up and available at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that fifty kilograms might be too light. I'm not sure, but you know what? Doesn't matter. We're going with it. Is this the pawn I w is this the pawn I desire? Yes, yes, it is. 
The only thing left to do now is to choose her class. Oh, I'm sorry. This is important. This is very important. All of those inclinations you see, Scather, Medicant, Mitigate, Challenger, and so on and so forth, these indicate how the pawn will react in combat, what they will do. I don't have the list pulled up, but I know that some of them are like Scather, I believe means that they will almost always attack everything, I'm not sure. The ones I'm really looking for are Guardian and Medicant. Guardian, because this means they will stay back, they will do their best to protect me and the rest of the party. And Medicant, because if injured, they will do everything in their power to not only heal themselves, but anyone else who is injured. I'm looking to have her as essentially a healer as well as a fighter. The other thing is, a lot of pawns that you will hire, if they are, say, scouts, if they like to go out and pick up either, uh, pioneers, that's a perfect example. If they're pioneers, they'll generally run out ahead of the party to go and find items and fight. And while that's all well and good, the big problem I have is sometimes I like to just stride through the battlefields, just walk at my own pace, you know? I don't want to rush. And pawns that are pioneers will always do everything in their power to literally walk six inches in front of you. Turn to the right and try and go around them, they'll turn to the right to stay in front of you. And that just pisses me off. It's like when you're driving down the highway and there's a car that's just ahead of you. It's too close for you to turn to go around them or behind them, but if you try and get ahead of them, they accelerate to stay ahead. And that just makes me angry. Excuse me for one moment, folks. I'll be right back. Unwind. Okay. Oh. 
All right, sorry about that, folks. Apparently my car was not parked correctly. <laughs> Anyways, uh... Still slightly out of breath. <laughs> so yes, I kind of want her to be a medicant as well as a guardian, or maybe perhaps a challenger, I'm not sure, but definitely a medicant. And someone who's not going to try and walk out in front of me, because I don't want to be pissed off about that. Kind of ironic, I just realized that I had to go move my car after talking about cars. So to ask, we have these four questions that will be asked of us, and depending on our answers, the values for the pawn inclination will change. So, you know what? Instead, I think I'm going to make her as much like Silvaria as possible. So when faced with danger, what trait would you most value in a follower? Let's see. An iron will, quick thinking, careful preparation, and the charisma to lead others. Well, to be honest, I think Silvaria has all four of these. Although I think she has the charisma to lead others slightly less, since she follows Maximilian very, very faithfully. I'm not sure about careful preparation. I'm sure she possesses it, but I'm not sure how much. So, I... Hmm, and based on her reaction in the desert, the moment that Maximilian was in danger when the tank was destroyed, the Fatimus, her first thought was immediately to his protection. So I'm not sure how that would relate to quick thinking. So I am going to go with an iron will. When in battle... What strategy would you prefer follower your, your follower employ? Kill all enemies, rescue comrades in danger, strike at the strongest foe, and call for reinforcements. Now, Savaria doesn't seem to be the kind to call for help. She seems to be headstrong and will fight to the last. And she'll definitely strike at the strongest foe if necessary. But I never actually saw her go to the aid of any specific comrades. I mean, she went to save Maximilian, yes, and by extension, I would say the crew of the Batavis, but I think only because Maximilian is there. So I'd say she'd pull more strongly towards killing everything, as opposed to rescuing all of her comrades. Hmm. So it's a toss-up between killing all enemies and striking at the strongest foe. I would definitely say that she is the type to not back down and definitely go for the most powerful opponent. Your follower rescues your party and turns the tide of the entire battle. What would you have them say? This way, Master, leave them to me. Now, Master, strike the final blow or quickly after them. No, I won't say that she's the kind to say strike the final blow. Definitely not. Leave them to me sounds closer. This way, Master, no. Leave them to me or quickly after them. I'd say if the enemy were in retreat, Silvaria would definitely want to press the advantage and keep on moving as fast as possible. So definitely quickly after them, in my opinion. And then finally, as a rule, which gift would please you most? A magic potion that preserves youth, a brave and just hero to succeed you, the perfect spouse, or a majestic white steed. Well, obviously these two aren't going to apply. The magic potion that preserves youth, that does not sound like Silvaria, so I would definitely say that is as close to her as possible. She is definitely a brave and just hero that will succeed me. To start, obviously, we only have access to the three classes, so we're gonna go with Fighter. I normally don't have two fighters on my team, I generally prefer not to, but I don't really have much of a choice here. I mean, all three of these fit her so well. I'm actually tempted to make her a strider for now. I mean, what with her using arrows to strike at enemies from afar and whatnot. But on the other hand, a fighter is much better at close range than anything. So we'll go with that.
fealty is sworn to you, Arisen. From this day, the Legion's men call pawns live and die by your command. been recognized as an arisen you've been granted a loyal pawn to be your constant companion on this journey in addition to this main pawn you may hire more yes i already explained this i explained this uh, we have complete control over our pawn in as much as how they level up their class vocations equipment all that good stuff that's completely under our control Now, I leveled up from this, and Silvaria pushed up to level 2. She will very quickly make up and, and get stronger. Speaking of which, let's see what she sounds like. Strongholds needn't be pretty, only sturdy. That sounds kind of like Silvaria. Her attitude, at least. Ah, a master and his pawn, is it? You'll be quite the force. Come the day you learn to fight as one. Mind you, that is a skill better honed in practice than in the heat of mortal combat. I can help in that regard, should you wish it. Well, not that you're going to give us much of a choice. For the time being, though, I'm going to say no thank you. We'll come back to this. Because Pinnacle Studio is starting to be a butt, and starting to get a little glitchy on me here, I think I'm going to call it a day, as far as the video goes. I'll go on ahead and rest up. Where could this be? I feel familiar with this area. And we will go on. And we will go to hero training. Well, maybe not hero training, but adventure training. Next time. But first... First. What? Oh, hey, is that weird dude? Good for him. We can safeguard you. Have your pick. Any you like. For tonight. For now, we will rest. What will it be today? Understood. Next time, adventure training. Now, uh, this is part of the whole pawn thing I should have explained. The way it works is, yes, 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 you'd be off with it now. A risk. The way it works with pawns is that um, if you're online, the pawn that you have will be available to every other player in the world. They can hire your pawn, they can have them accompany them on their quests, your pawn will gain knowledge of areas that they have been to, they will gain knowledge of how to fight enemies along the way. So if they've fought enemies I haven't encountered yet, Harpies, for example, are an enemy that I have not personally encountered as Beardo. So if Silvaria were to go online and fought with someone who knew how to fight Harpies and fought Harpies and all that good stuff, when she came back, she would be an expert and know how to handle them instead of learning as we go. The thing with that, though, is that since we're not online, since I have no way of going online with this character, and I don't plan to, I'll only have access to the offline pawns. So, what, so I will not be gaining any extra experience with certain enemies, or gaining new treasures, or insights. I'm stuck with what I have. Which is quite alright, though. I certainly don't mind. Alright, folks. Next time, adventure training, and then we move on, and figure out what it means to be arisen.